The series is sponsored by Taskade. Taskade is a real-time organization and collaboration platform. You can start by creating workspaces with each workspace capable of having a subspace. Each subspace can contain one or more projects, which in turn can contain tasks with support for chatting and video calling. Tab to create subtasks, set due dates, assign them, leave a comment, and organize them using hashtags. You can automate workflows by making use of reusable templates. You can visualize each project as a list, a board, action items, mind map, or even an org chart, which is really useful if you're part of a team. Taskade is available on the web, iOS, Android, Chrome, Mac, and Windows. It is simple and free for personal use and growing teams. Give Taskade a try by clicking on the link in the description down below. Hey guys, my name is Vishwas and welcome to this short series on setting up a React project with TypeScript and Webpack from scratch. Now, if you're a React developer, you probably know about Create React App, which abstracts away the project setup process and helps you get started with the code in a matter of minutes. And that is probably what I recommend as well if you are a beginner. However, this abstraction is not something we always want. Personally, I feel more comfortable knowing that I am aware and in complete control of all the configuration in my application. It helps me learn a lot about the tools that are otherwise hidden under the hood. I feel that most of us might be on the same boat, which is why I've created this short series. In this series, you will learn how to set up from scratch a complete React project with a few tools that will greatly improve your developer experience, especially when working with a team. So you'll get to learn a few things that you can take back and introduce at your workplace. I will also demonstrate how to reuse the setup once it's completed. All right, let me break down our approach to this series. In this video, we are going to set up a basic React application with TypeScript and Webpack 5. So we will see that hello world text in the browser. In the next video, we will understand how to configure Webpack and TypeScript to allow rendering of images and SVGs. After that, we will understand how to set up Webpack config for multiple environments like dev and prod. Then we are going to learn about an awesome feature, which is React Refresh. We will also learn how to integrate ESLint, which is a linter, Prettier, which is a code formatter, Husky, which does linting and formatting based on Git hooks. And finally, we will wrap up the series with some next steps for our boilerplate code. Let me give you a heads up though, that there is no single way to set up a React project from scratch. And your conventions might differ to mine especially when it comes to folder structure. But having said that, what you're about to learn in this series is definitely a good start from which point onwards you can always improve the code based on your conventions and requirements. Let's begin. In VS Code, I've opened a folder called react-template, which is going to contain all the code we write in this series. So go ahead and create a folder with the name of your choice and open it in VS Code. Now, for our very first step, we are going to initialize a new git repository with the git init command. So open the terminal, which is control backtick and run the command git init. We then create a .git ignore file, which we will populate as we progress through the series. For step two, we are going to create two new folders. The first one is source, and this will hold our source code. The second folder is build. This folder will contain all the files and artifacts when we build our React application for deployment. The reason I've created this folder, although not necessary at this point, is to help us visualize 
where the input and output for our application will reside. So all the code we write goes into the source folder and all the bundled code goes into the build folder. The build folder though doesn't need to be tracked so we add it to the git ignore file. Now for step 3 we initialize a package.json file in the root directory. So in the terminal run the command npm init dash dash y which takes in default values without prompting. The command throws an error if there is a space in your folder name so make sure you don't have any. Once the file is generated you can modify any property you want to but what we have here doesn't hurt us in any way so I leave it as it is. Step 4 we are going to create an index.html file in the source folder. Within the file I'm going to type the exclamation symbol and tab to scaffold the code for an HTML page. This will be the only HTML file for our single page application. I'll set the title to react template and in the body tag add a div element with id equal to root. Our react app will be injected into this root div element. Let's commit our progress so far. Steps 1 to 4. For step 5, let's start getting into the dependencies. Any package we install will result in the creation of the node modules folder, so let's add that to git ignore. node underscore modules. Now then, what are the packages we require? We are building React applications, so we need React and React DOM. In the terminal, run the command yarn add react and react hyphen dom. We should now be able to write react code in our application. However, we can only write components in JavaScript. What we need is the support of TypeScript. So for step 6, we install TypeScript and the types for react and react dom as dev dependencies. The command is yarn add dash d for dev dependencies and the packages are typescript at types slash react and at types slash react hyphen dom. For step 7 we need to add the configuration for our typescript compiler and the way we do that is using the tsconfig.json file. So in the root of our project let's create a new file called tsconfig.json. I'm going to copy paste the file contents which you can of course get from the github repo and the link is available in the description. It's important to note here that the compiler options are focused on type checking and not code transpilation. We will be using babel for that which we will get to in a few minutes. Now what I've done is left a comment next to each configuration to help you understand what each option does but I highly recommend you understand more about this from the TypeScript website. We have set target to ES5, our module code generation is ESNext with module resolution being node, DOM and ESNext are what we want TypeScript to support, JSX is React-JSX which enables us to leave out the import react line from every component. We don't want TypeScript to emit any outputs. Isolated modules is set to true which transpiles each file as a separate module. We want strict type checking. ES module interop is set to true which allows you to import star as something in your components. We're going to skip type checking of the declaration files. We want consistent casing file names to be true, resolve JSON module to be true to support JSON files and I've commented out allow.js and check.js which are helpful if you're migrating from JavaScript to TypeScript. We are also instructing TypeScript to monitor everything only within the source folder. Alright now that we have TypeScript with the configuration file setup we can write some React code. 
For step eight, let's set up the entry point and the root component of our application. In the source folder, let's create a new file called app.tsx, which will contain the root component. Within the file, we add the app component that returns an h1 tag. Now that we have our root component, let's create a new file index.tsx again in the source folder. This will be the entry point. Within the file, let's import React DOM from React DOM and the app component from app.tsx. We then mount the app component onto the div element with id is equal to root using the React DOM library. All right, we now have something that can be rendered in the browser. However, this React code cannot be understood by the browser as it is. We're going to need Babel to convert our React and TypeScript code into JavaScript. So for our step nine, let's install Babel with the necessary plugins as a dev dependency. So in the terminal, run the command yarn add dash d at babel slash core at babel slash preset env at babel slash preset hyphen react and at babel slash preset hyphen typescript. Once we have babel and the necessary presets installed, we need to add a Babel configuration file. In the root of the project, create a file called .babelrc. Within the file, we are going to list down the presets for Babel to use. I'm going to copy paste the code, which again, you can find in my GitHub repo. Our project can now transpile the modern JavaScript features into a format that browsers can understand. Our next step is to make use of Webpack, which is a module bundler. The code we write across multiple components will be bundled by Webpack, which can then be referenced in the index.html file. Let's start step 10 by installing the Webpack related packages as a dev dependency. In the terminal, run the command yarn add d webpack webpack hyphen cli webpack hyphen dev hyphen server and finally html hyphen webpack hyphen plugin. Apart from these, we also need the Babel loader package which allows transpiling JavaScript files using Babel and webpack. So run the command yarn add dash d Babel hyphen loader. Before proceeding, let's make a small commit steps five through 10. All right, now for the Webpack configuration. In the root folder, I'm going to create another folder called Webpack. Within the folder, I'm going to create a file called webpack.config.js. Now you could opt for a .ts extension, but I leave the Webpack configuration as a .js file as there isn't much type checking required. The file content though is quite a lot to type. So again, let me copy paste the code and walk you through the configuration. Our configuration is an object. First, we have the entry point, which points to the index.tsx file in the source folder. Next, we specify the resolve extensions property. This configuration allows us to leave off the file extension when importing. For example, we have left out .tsx when importing the app component from app.tsx. Webpack basically checks for a .tsx extension first, and if the file isn't found, it'll try to resolve the import with .ts, and if still not found, tries to resolve with .js. A pretty handy property, as you can see. Next, we have the module rules. We're saying that Webpack should use the Babel loader for all .js, .ts, 
.jsx and .tsx files excluding the known modules folder. With the output property, we are instructing Webpack that the bundled code should be placed inside a file called bundle.js and bundle.js should be placed inside the build folder. We then specify the mode as development which sets process.env.node underscore env to development. Not important right now, but Webpack does throw a warning if we don't specify the mode property. Finally, we specify a Webpack plugin, which is the HTML Webpack plugin. Now what this does is inject the bundle.js file into the index.html file and place that HTML file in the build folder. As you can see, we don't have to specify the script tag ourselves in the HTML file. This HTML Webpack plugin will take care of it for us. And that pretty much is our Webpack configuration. For our 11th and final step in this video, let's add the npm script to run our application. In package.json, we're going to add a script. The script is start and the command is webpack serve followed by the configuration file which is in the webpack folder. So dash dash config webpack folder and the file name is webpack.config.js. Let's also set the dash dash open option which will automatically open up the app in the browser if webpack compiles successfully. Now in the terminal, we can run the command yarn start and the application opens in the browser. We see the text from app component. So our React application is working as expected. What we have so far though is the basic setup with React, TypeScript and Webpack. There are plenty more packages and tools we can make use of to make the setup a whole lot better. So with the next couple of videos, let's look at improving this code base. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.